All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll get started. Uh, appreciate you uh, coming in uh, today uh, for another uh, webinar. Uh, I have my co-presenter here, Mr. Arnold Gagani. How are you, Arnold? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Zahir. Great. Well, uh, it's uh, summer months here in uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, in Dubai, and in the UAE. I uh, hope everyone is uh, doing well, uh, keeping well with their businesses. Uh, it's obviously a bit of a quiet time, uh, but uh, I'm sure a lot of business is happening. A lot of work is also being done in preparation for the corporate tax law, which now has come into effect. We are in uh, uh, moving forward uh, in, in into the uh, first uh, 100 days of uh, implementation of uh, the corporate tax. And during these uh, days, we will be continue to bring out these webinars. Uh, our subject today is the UE tax on non-residents. So um, yes, if you are a non-resident and you have a uh, doing business here in the UAE, there is something for you to be aware of when it comes to this uh, corporate tax. So uh, for the folks who are coming in, uh, you will find this subject very interesting. Um, and uh, there's a lot of rules that need to be understood and we hope to share that with you uh, today. Um, I'm just going to uh, start the presentation here. And uh, if, as uh, we are going through this presentation, if you have any questions on the subject matter, uh, please uh, put it into the chat box well, and then we can take it up uh, at the end. And that could be anything with respect to tax. We can go uh, uh, regarding corporate tax, not just what we are presenting today. So uh, just starting uh, things off. I will try to, oops, there we go. So this will be the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to discuss the importance of the subject of, uh, of non-resident, what it is sort of defined as, um, and how uh, it's come about. We'll maybe go into some of the theories on why uh, non-residents need to be taxed. Uh, obviously, elements of uh, business fairness uh, come into uh, come to mind. And um, so from there, we're eventually then going to go into the UAE specific rules on non residents. Uh, Article number 11 of UAE corporate tax law discusses this uh, the concept of permanent establishment, PE, and UAE source income, how we're going to define those. And then a caveat decision number 56 uh, on the uh, UAE nexus, which is a term that comes up. Uh, and we will be discussing that for those who may not know what a UAE nexus is. We will be defining that. And then uh, uh, the corporate tax registration requirements. So um, this is a thing. Um, hope you will find this engaging and this useful. And of course, we will take up your topics at the end uh, on uh, the, the tax subject. Okay. So uh, our firm, Elliot Hadi Shahid, we've been uh, here in the UAE for 40 uh, four years, and we've been providing accounting uh, services, audit services, and the full uh, list of services where a chartered accounts office can provide. Uh, and we're very happy to be, uh, we've grown our business across uh, the Emirates. We're part of Elite Global Alliance. Here you see the list of our services. We have much experience in all these areas and uh, uh, areas of even consulting, which is uh, corporate finance, transaction advi uh, advisory, business valuation, uh, restructuring. We can also do this work uh, for those who are uh, of that requirement. We're participating and established members of different business councils here in the UAE. Um, Amcham Abu Dhabi, Pakistan Business Council, French Business Group, and uh, a Swiss Business Council, many others, and we are also registered and associated with uh, all the major free zones and financial institutions here in the UAE. Uh, our mentioned Elliott Global Alliance, this is a multidisciplinary uh, alliance uh, that is in 90 countries. Accounting and legal firms are part of our uh, alliance, and we're providing services around the world uh, and to of a high standard. Um, Coming to the work that we're doing on the tax front, we have the VAT services that we're providing for many companies, registration, implementation. Um, also, we're review, uh, reviewing 
the VAP return and then submitting the filing. Um, and if, if there's any areas where folks need any type of uh, guidance or appeal, uh, we are doing that. We are a registered tax agent. So uh, those who are needing us uh, for the tax agent uh, or being, uh, we are here to provide that as well. So just to go through the tax services that we're offering, um, right now it's a good time for companies to be looking at uh, getting impact assessment to see how the corporate tax law is gonna affect their business and different points of their business. We'll go into tax uh, tax planning in terms of for the upcoming, uh, how you'll be uh, managing your business with respect to the new law, tax compliance. Uh, this could be uh, different uh, aspects of the law where we have to see how the legality is uh, being complied with within the business and then uh, tax risk assessment and mitigation and advisory. We're, uh, any audit, tax audits and dispute resolution. So if your company is going to be going through a tax audit, we can help you prepare for that. Uh, incentive relief and credit planning, accounting and reporting, uh, the transfer pricing, which is a very important subject and uh, tax training and education. So we're providing, uh, this is an example of the education we're giving. We can give a proper corporate uh, tax uh, uh, training program to your uh, company as uh, per the requirement and also for VAT. Um, we are led by our managing partners, Dr. Hadi Shahid and Dr. Kaiser Anis. And uh, my, uh, there's my bio there uh, as a CPA. And our offices are here in uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Alain, and we have also office in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Right, so uh, we're gonna go into the subject, the background behind which uh, this subject is arising, tax for non-residents. Uh, so we'll uh, kick this uh, off with uh, uh, Mr. Arnold, please explain why this subject is important why people should be concerned about it. I think some folks might be confused what it means by a non-resident. So please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zahir. So uh, our topic uh, today is uh, related to uh, corporate tax on non-residents. So uh, it's very important uh, for the non-residents to know their tax obligation in the year. So that's uh, our main objective is to explain how uh, non-residents will be taxed in the UAE. So there are certain factors, of course, uh, that uh, we will be discussing the law, okay? And also the most recent cabinet decision issued, uh, cabinet decision number 56 of 2023, uh, which defines what is actually the nexus. So everyone is actually waiting for the definition of the nexus. So, uh, so uh, we have now the decision, so we're gonna explain that further. And uh, before that, of course, uh, we have to tackle also some theories behind the taxation of non-residents. So uh, usually we, you will not find that uh, in uh, discussed in our uh, tax law. However, uh, it is also worth discussing with you guys so that uh, you'll be knowing why is it important. Yeah. Yeah, so the th theory is uh, we're coming uh, into um, to three specific areas. And one is that um, we are, it's an aspect of, of generating revenue for the government. Um, we also have this concept of fairness and equity and then the public benefit. So I'll uh, delve into this uh, a bit more. And I think this people will understand a little bit why we're getting taxed, but how, how uh, what, what is, sort of the, the theory on with respect to the non-residents? Okay, uh, of course, the first one is uh, uh, related to fiscal revenue. It means, uh, of course, uh, taxation of a non-resident will also add revenue to our government. So it's very important that uh, you're gonna tax also the non-residents. So under the theory of fairness and equity, uh, non-resident would have an unfair advantage. Of course, imagine this. If you're going to tax those residents, and then if you will not tax those non-residents, what will happen is the non-resident will have an unfair advantage over those 
established company in a particular jurisdiction. So uh, that's one of the reasons why they're taxing the non-resident because of, of course, equity, equal treatment to all entities. And of course, public benefit, uh, we, everyone knows that running a government is very costly. Of course, taxation of non-resident will also provide uh, additional costs uh, and uh, to sustain those costs. So it is basically additional revenue in terms of the government administration. And of course, we want to, uh, the other aspect is, oops, I don't know. there we go. We have the other aspects of which is, we want to reduce uh, tax evasion and protecting, we have to protect the domestic industry and recipro uh, recipro reciprocity, right? So uh, if, we, if we're going to have companies that are um, um, operating, we want them to be subject to the same rules that the domestic uh, companies are uh, subject to. Um, you know, uh, with respect to the tax evasion, we want to mitigate uh, the erosion of the base, uh, remove any gap and loopholes in the tax laws, and, um, and have in some international compliance. Um, domestic industries, of course, you want to protect the local companies. If you have a company that is coming from outside and they are benefiting from doing business in the country and they are subject to different rules, then that uh, the uh, concept of fairness is affected. Um, uh, we want to avoid distorting the market and avoid unfair practices. Reciprocity is that this comes with respect to government relations. So each country will protect uh, their businesses and their business interests and protect their residents. And um, you know, the, in the end, the non-resident derives a benefit as well from being present in the country. So it is benefiting from the tax dollars being or uh, tax revenue being applied into the economy. So. Um, so, so this is uh, some of the theories behind taxing of non-residents, right? We also have the sovereignty and economic policy and maintenance of tax treaties and source-based taxation. Arnold, can you discuss these theories? Okay, so when we say uh, sovereignty and economic policy, okay, of course, uh, we all know that taxation law is actually uh, imposed in each of the country. So it is like uh, implementing what is already been a past law. Okay, so uh, what, what, what will happen is that uh, uh, the, each of the government uh, entities around the world will have a transparency rule when it comes to taxation of non-residents. So it is about implementing only the uh, uh, whatever is a uh, uh, rules mentioned in the law of, of each jurisdiction. Uh, maintenance of tax treaty, of course, uh, relationship with other countries is very important. So uh, in this case, uh, each of the country has its own treaties, of course, so that is uh, to improve uh, the relation. So imagine uh, you can actually use the tax treaty uh, for the advantage of each of the countries. So that's why it's very important to know uh, what is mentioned in the tax treaties. If there's a benefit, okay, uh, for example, in the UAE, the residents of the UAE is given benefit in that particular country, the same rules must be applied to those non-residents located also in the UAE. So when we say uh, source-based taxation, so it means that uh, in most jurisdiction, of course, uh, most of the non-residents are being taxed only on the state source income. So it means that if uh, it meets the requirements, uh, it, non resident will be taxed only on the state source income. So uh, it doesn't uh, fall above that thing. Okay, of course, each country has its own rules. So uh, in this case, what we're gonna do is that when it comes to the UAE, we're gonna uh, explain uh, three factors wherein a non resident will be subjected to a corporate tax. Yeah, so let's uh, have a graphical representation of all these relationships.
Okay, so we, um, we're here we're gonna represent, we have the different entities and different players in this uh, sort of dynamic that is being created. We have the tax authorities, uh, 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 which are you know, mandated by the government. We have the rules that have been uh, with respect to residency rules uh, for presence. Then you have the residents who are subject to those rules. Then you also have non-residents who will then have to adhere to these rules as well. You have the tax treaties that is between one country's government and another. And so this is how we will uh, uh, operate. So uh, Arnold, would you like to explain further on this uh, representation? Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the relationship uh, between the authorities, the rules and regulation, and also resident and non-residents. Okay, uh, our topic today is uh, related to non-residents, okay? So uh, when we're talking about non-residents, because in our last webinar, we already discussed the residency rules uh, in the UAE that pertains mostly, okay, for the individual non-residents and its resident. However, nowadays, uh, we're going to be tackling the discussion on non-resident, uh, juridical, uh, juridical person, which yeah. is our, actually non-residents. Right. So uh, what is the importance of knowing uh, tax residency for non-residents? So let's get into that. So why is it important, uh, Arnold? Why should people know these rules? Okay. So... Uh, there are many factors to consider uh, in determining whether a particular non-resident is exposed to a, a certain liability uh, for a, uh, in particular jurisdiction. So imagine if you're operating in one country and you do not know whether you're a resident of that country, right? So what will happen is that uh, you, in most cases, uh, you're going to uh, neglect uh, complying to those rules and regulations. So that's why uh, the benefits of knowing the taxation for the non-resident includes determining the liability, okay? So if a particular non-resident is actually meeting the condition in one country, therefore you have to compute your tax, okay? So that's uh, one of the main objectives. You have to compute the tax, okay? Determine your liability and pay it to the authority if any in case, okay? And al also to determine the double taxation, uh, in this case, uh, it's very important to know the double tax treaties uh, between countries because, of course, uh, this uh, is a potential uh, reduction in your uh, liability when it comes to your corporate tax. So it's very important okay, to determine okay, your, uh, the double taxation treaty between your countries. Okay, in case that there's no treaty, okay, it is also worth uh, making an impact assessment on how are you going to comply with the rules and regulation? And of course, what will be the tax impact in your country? Okay, or in your company? Okay, and considering also your resident, because in the UAE, you will be a non-resident. However, in your country, you are taxed worldwide. So imagine the effect in your, uh, not only the company located in the UAE, but also worldwide, okay? And of course, uh, as we have mentioned, there's also what uh, we have to consider also tax treaties. And of course, uh, basically, if you are a non-resident uh, in the UAE, there will be reporting requirements, okay? So uh, in this case, uh, it will also affect your report, okay? So what we are actually looking for is transparency, okay? So uh, if you do not know what are the reports that uh, you will be submitting, then it poses a risk on your compliance. Yes, I think the other uh, things to note um, is that the withholding tax um, and non-residents may be subject to different withholding tax rates compared to the tax residents. Uh, withholding taxes are often deducted at the source of the income and understanding of that tax benefit status is essential. Uh, capital gains tax, uh, some in some countries, they will differentiate between the resident and non-resident uh, taxpayers. Uh, of course, failing to comply will result in penalties, 
and interest charges can add up and other legal issues may mount uh, if you are found that you have created, had some infractions with the, the tax laws. So this is important to uh, adhere to the correct tax residency rules. And then uh, in some countries, residents may be ineligible for certain government benefits. So knowing your tax residency status can help you determine if you are eligible for these benefits. No, so let's come to the UAE corporate tax on non-residents. So we will uh, discuss the things specific to UAE after going through the theory behind taxing of non-residents. So Arnold, please discuss Article Eleven. Okay. So. Uh, when we uh, when we're talking about uh, non-resident, of course, I think uh, your question will be, who are considered non-residents in the UAE? So, uh, so what we are actually uh, pertaining to when it comes to non-resident juridical person are those uh, a branch of a foreign entities. Okay. So, uh, uh, in order for you to determine the liability uh related to non-residents okay there will be uh, three factors that uh, we have to consider okay so uh in this case uh first is the permanent establishment in the uae okay uh and then we have uh what we call uh your income is uh, actually a uae source okay and then of course the definition that we're actually looking for the nexus in the uae so uh letter a and letter b Actually, you can find it uh, already in our uh, corporate tax law in the UAE. Okay, that is uh, respectively Article number fourteen and uh, Article number thirteen. Okay, uh, in in the corporate tax law, the nexus, as, uh, as mentioned, uh, is this to be defined. Okay, uh, in the future by the ministry. So in this case, uh, what happened? That's why they issued Cabinet Decision Number fifty six of twenty twenty three. Okay to explain the definition of the nexus, okay? So uh, in this case, uh, you, can be subject, uh, you can be subjected to a corporate tax based on these factors. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna explain each of these factors, okay, in a more, uh, uh, in detail. Yeah. So, the concept of permanent establish, uh, establishment, uh, uh, sometimes you're seeing this uh, PE, uh, people are throwing it around, but that's what it means, permanent establishment. It means a business can be subject to corporate income tax in a jurisdiction, even where they lack a subsidiary or a legal entity there. So in the um, OECD model, it provides that the term of permanent that means a fixed place of business through which the business of an enterprise is wholly or partly carried on. And a permanent establishment is a fixed place of business, which uh, enterprise uh, can uh, is conducting their business. So um, the idea is to um, stop large multinationals from abusing the existing permit PE rules for which there's an absence of a fixed presence in a jurisdiction. So they avoid having to pay income tax. So, Arnold, you want to add something on this concept of PE? Yeah. Uh, because uh, what happened here, uh, some of the multinational, multinational entities uh, will not be considering any uh, tax liability in a given jurisdiction. So uh, in some cases, they're trying to avoid uh, making a PE in a particular country. Because uh, in this concept, if there's a permanent establishment, it means you are liable to tax on that particular jurisdiction. So in this case, uh, what happens is that uh, some of the some of those entities will try to avoid okay however there's what we call uh, rules in determining whether there's a permanent establishment okay so good thing uh, in our uh, regulation in the uae they have given us a test to determine so uh in in the uae law so we have seen that in order for you to establish the permanent establishment you can actually apply a fixed place of business test and the other one is a dependent agent, uh, agent test, okay? So uh, actually in, in uh, international uh, taxation, uh, they, there's another form of permanent establishment, okay? So another type of 
permanent establishment, okay? Uh, we call it the project PE, or in other words, we call it also construction or installation PE, okay? And the other one is the service PE, okay? So all of this, uh, all of these four factors will be considered uh, in determining if a particular non-resident is having a PE in a particular jurisdiction. So uh, we're gonna be explaining the first two factors in this case. Right. Yeah, and so here we get, we'll see um, what the fixed place of business test. So uh, if you can go through this test and example, what is considered a fixed place of business for determining a PE? Right. So, um, in a permit uh, permit establishment, a foreign company will have a permit establishment if through which the business of the foreign company is wholly or partly carried on. So, what can that be considered? A uh, place of management, a branch, an office, factory, workshop, real properties, a building site where activities are created, carried on for over six months, and installation of the structures used in the exploration of natural resources. These are all examples of fixed place uh, of business and would be considered that a, a, a foreign entity has a permanent establishment in the company, in the, in the country, right? On the other hand, if a fixed place is considered a preparatory or auxiliary in nature, no PE will arise. So, um, so I'll give, we have some examples over here. Use of facilities solely for storage, display, or delivery of an enterprise's goods or merchandise. Maintenance of a stock of enterprise's goods or merchandise solely for storage, display, or delivery. And uh, maintenance uh, uh, of, uh, of a stock or enterprise of goods or merchandise solely for, the, uh, for processing by another enterprise. So uh, delivery, processing, uh, or um, just representing or, or, or storing, these things are will not constitute uh, a PE. So uh, that should be kept in mind. Now, this is the other test, which is a dependent agent test. Uh, Arnold, can you uh, go through this test? Uh, what, what is a dependent agent? Yes. So uh, in some, some cases, uh, what happens is that uh, a particular head office, okay, uh, will try to avoid having a permanent establishment in a particular jurisdiction. So, it, uh, in some cases, what they do is that they're trying to circumvent the law of that particular jurisdiction. So, in order for them to do that, is that we're going to hire a particular agent, okay, an agent located in a particular country. So in this case, uh, what will happen is that they're going to make a business through a particular agent, okay? So uh, in this case, uh, what will happen is that uh, if a particular agent is actually dependent, okay, uh, on a particular jurisdiction uh, or a particular company located outside the UAE, that will be considered as a permanent establishment, okay, in the UAE. So, uh, so uh, we just we will be summarizing this in this case that if uh, the agent is actually uh, independent, it means that it has its own uh, contract signing, it has its own decision. Then a PE will not be created in this case. Okay. So if you are actually having an agent, so what you have to do is to determine if that particular agent is actually dependent on its principal. Okay. When we're talking about the principal, it means that uh, the principal is the entity who doesn't have a PE in the UAE. So we, we can say that it is uh, uh, the entity that is uh, considered as a non-resident. So in this case. Right. Uh, then let's talk about uh, state sourced income. So what do we mean income sourced in the state? Oh, sorry, we have a bit more on the dependent agent test. Yes, the exceptions. Yes. So uh, in this case, uh, as we have mentioned, if the agent is independent, okay, it will not create a permanent establishment. Okay, so 
uh, if the agent is also acting on its own, okay, meaning it's operating independent from its principal, we, it, a PE will not be created for that particular non resident. So, uh, the best way to determine this is through an impact analysis and a careful study of a particular entity. Okay. And now we can move on to the concept of what is considered uh, state source or UE source income. So, uh, income can, can, should be considered state sourced if the uh, following instances, uh, where it is derived from a resident person, where it is derived from a non-resident person and the income received has been paid or accrued in connection with and attributable to a PE of that non-resident person in the UAE, where it is otherwise accrued or derived from activities performed by assets located, capital invested, or rights used, or services performed, or the benefited from in the UAE, and subject to any conditions and limitations that minister may determine. So, income of sale of goods in the UAE, income from the provision of services that are rendered. And of course, these are also subject to any limitations that the minister may determine. So, so income from a uh, contract, insofar as has been wholly or partly performed, and income from movable or immovable property in the UAE, disposable or uh, a disposal of shares or capital, uh, a use or right to use in the UAE, interest that meets any of the following conditions, a loan that is secured by movable or immovable property, borrower is a, uh, and the borrower is a resident person and the borrower is a government entity. And insurance or reinsurance premiums in any of the following instances, when insured asset is located in the UE, insured person is a resident uh, person and insured activity is conducted in the UE. Arnold, would you like to add anything with regarding state sourced income? Yes, so uh, as uh, Zahir has mentioned, uh, these are the rules, uh, the, uh, examples of those uh, UAE source income uh, that, will, uh, that will be considered as an income of a non resident. So uh, this is actually not limited to this. So uh, there will be yeah. uh, more things to come. Yeah, so uh, anyone, uh, the idea is basically anyone generating business, uh, here in the UAE from different assets, from different business lines, consider it UAE source income. I think this is fairly understood for most. Uh, and it, the law is basically, uh, has been um, a structure such that it's covering every type of activity. Uh, now the concept of UAE nexus. Uh, Arnold, could you uh, delve into this? What is a UAE nexus? Uh, this has been mentioned. Uh, in the law. Yes. Okay. So we're going to explain the background of cabinet decision number 56 of 2023. Okay. Uh, we also determine, uh, it is uh, titled as the de determination of a nexus of a non-resident. So um, the term nexus is already mentioned in the UAE corporate tax law. However, uh, what is missing is the definition of that. So that's why a uh, good thing that uh, we have already uh, the cabinet decision number 56 uh, explaining the details about the nexus. Okay, so the term nexus actually pertaining to a connection. Okay, so if you're going to look into that, it means a connection of an resident to a particular jurisdiction. So in this case, UAE. So uh, uh, the, we have summarized the decision into three things. Uh, number one, non-resident who owns immovable property in the UAE will be considered to have a nexus in the UAE. So in this case, uh, the legal ownership of immovable property is very important. Okay, So we're going to define what is included in the definition of immovable property later on. Uh, second factor is that non-resident who carry on the business in the UAE will be considered to have a nexus in the UAE. So we can say business activity in the UAE through a license, okay? And of course, uh, also, uh, what uh, we also uh, considering the artificial transfer of rights of immovable property uh, may be considered arrangement to obtain corporate tax advantage. So uh, in this case, uh, we can explain also uh, article number 50 of the corporate tax law uh, related to 
uh, general anti-abuse law. Okay? Uh, as we have mentioned before, uh, some entities will try to avoid having a PE, okay? Or even a nexus in their way to avoid to be exposed in a corporate tax. But in this case, that's a warning that uh, we have to consider later on. We will explain for you. Yeah. So, oh, so some of the key takeaways from the decision. Um, one is that a non-resident person who owns immovable property in the UAE will be considered to have a nexus in the UAE. A non-resident person who carries on a business in the UAE will be considered to have a nexus. Any artificial transfer of rights in a movable property may be considered uh, to uh, uh, arrangements uh, may be considered as arrangements to obtain a corporate tax advantage. So definition of what is immovable property, well, that is any area of land for which rights or interests and services can be created, any building structure or engineering work that is attached to the land, and any fixture or equipment which makes up a permanent part of the land or is permanently attached to the building structure or engineering work, or even to attach to a seabed. Um, well, uh, taxable income, uh, if there is a nexus in a state, taxable income that is attributed to a movable property we should include income from a right in uh, REM. This is refers to direct, uh, directly attached to the property, ownership or possession use, sale or disposal of uh, immovable properties, usage or, uh, uh, usage or exploitation, and renting out. So, uh, Arnold, can you discuss a bit about the anti-abuse law that applies to artificial transfer of rights in immovable property? What this means and how it works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it also uh, it means that if a particular non-resident is trying to avoid having a nexus in the UAE, so what they will try to do is to transfer the rights to a different entity to avoid having an obligation. But in this case, uh, what will happen is that if they're gonna do that artificially, they're gonna be committing non-compliance. So the first thing they're gonna, uh, what will happen is that they're gonna be, uh, they will be uh, uh, not in compliance with article number 50. So uh, it is a warning, okay? So in this case, you cannot uh, artificially transfer your run, okay? or your uh, nexus to another entity to avoid having uh, a nexus. So example of corporate tax advantage will include a refund or increase the fund on the corporate tax. Avoidance or a reduction or a corporate tax payable. So in this case, in most cases, the second, uh, the second uh, instances uh, will be, uh, will be at risk. The payroll of payment, corporate tax, or advancement of a refund, uh, avoidance of obligation to deduct or account a corporate tax. So this is uh, actually a warning. Okay, I think in the past uh, webinars, we already discussed this uh, on uh, trying to uh, at least uh, study the impact if you are actually not in compliance with Article Number 50 of uh, General anti abuse law. Right, uh, let's uh, summarize what we've discussed. Yes. All right, so Arnold, maybe you can take us through this flow, uh, this flow chart and summarizing what we have talked about today and what people will help uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the decision flow. Okay, after all of those things that uh, we have mentioned, let's summarize the things, okay? For the non-resident, of course, uh, try to consider the three factors. So we can explain again. So if the non-resident having a permanent establishment in the UAE, the first factor, okay? So does it has a place of management? Okay, does it, is it a branch? Is it an office, a factory, okay? A workshop, real properties, a building, okay? Where activities are carried on over six months, okay? So the building site, uh, we also call it in some cases as a project PE, 
okay, uh, installation and structural use in the exploration of natural resources. So uh, if the answer is actually uh, yes, on um, uh, you have a PE, uh, definitely you will be subjected to a UAE corporate tax. Okay, so uh, if you don't have a PE, go to the next question. Okay, uh, do you have a UAE source income? Okay, so uh, there are many UAE source income. This is here. So in case that uh, you have a UAE source income, okay, uh, if the answer is yes, uh, yes, you will be exposed to a withholding tax. Okay, however, good news, guys, uh, because currently the withholding tax in the UAE will be at zero rate. So it means that uh, there's a withholding tax, but actually there's no obligation to make a payment or a reduction uh, or a payment to the non resident because of its rate. This is zero. Okay, uh, also, uh, the uh, good news also, there will be no reporting uh, on the part of the source. Okay. Uh, uh, the source of the income. Um, okay, it is the company located in the UAE. Okay. So if you don't have a UAE source income, go to the last definition. We call it the nexus. Uh, we have just explained what is the nexus. Nexus is a connection. So uh, based on the cabinet decision number 56 of 2022, this is pertaining to uh, immobile property located in the UAE. Okay, so if you are having a nexus in the UAE, as per cabinet decision number 56, okay, you will be subjected to a UAE corporate tax in this case. Okay, so uh, in summary, uh, if you have a PE in the UAE, you are subject to UAE corporate tax. Okay, if you have a nexus also in the UAE, you are subject also to the UAE corporate tax. However, if you have a UAE source income, okay, in this case, you will be subjected to a withholding tax. However, withholding tax is, as we have mentioned, zero rate. So uh, it will be good for the non-resident that they will be receiving whatever they have built to their customer located in the UAE. Okay. Thank you for that summary, Arnold. This is a very detailed uh, uh, chart that's showing uh, 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 the flow mm -hmm. and how people should be uh, computing and understanding what uh, is the treatment for a non-resident. Okay. Now, let's talk about just registration for corporate tax for non-residents. I apologize, my camera is uh, currently not operating, so... Uh, hopefully, it'll come back on in a second. Um, yeah, I will just. Uh, oops. Right. So, for non residents, it is not always mandatory. Um, here we go, try to get my video started again. It's not coming back. Uh, but uh, here, the corporate tax registration for non-residents is also important. For non-residents, it's not always mandatory to register. So what is, what, what is important sh should they know? Um, uh, Arnold, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Zaire. So first of all, uh, we're going to look again on the three factors of uh, uh, the PE. UA source income and also the nexus. Okay, so we're gonna see if they are required to register UA corporate tax. Okay, first of all, uh, what if the non resident who has permanent establishment in the UAE? So, how will be its registration requirement? The answer is yes, it's mandatory for you to register for a corporate tax, especially if you have a permanent establishment. Okay, so, however, what if the non-resident has only UA source income and it doesn't have a PE or even a nexus in the UAE? So are you required to register? The answer is no. There's no requirement to register if you have only UA source income, okay? But take note, you should not have any PE or a nexus, 
in the UAE. Okay? What if you have only a nexus in the UAE? So what will happen? Ah, uh, yes, the answer is yes. You are required to register for the UAE corporate tax. So uh, this is our last part. We're in, we're gonna, we are actually telling you when are you going to register for a corporate tax. Depends on uh, the type of income you're gonna have in the UAE. And also at the same time, considering the presence. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, going further, we should you should be getting your uh, you should be also organizing your financial records. So, uh, establish a robust system by which you're maintaining accurate uh, accounting and reporting. And then, accordingly, then also uh, documentation is uh, imperative for for compliance related matters. So. Okay, so uh, please um, either uh, work with your, uh, your teams uh, to, to, to look into this or uh, see how you can uh, adjust it based on uh, the, uh, you know, using the help of an outside advisor or consultant. Okay, I've finally come back online, thank you. Other things, uh, yes, the concept of transfer uh, transfer pricing. This is very important in for related party transactions. How you're doing the transfer pricing? You should have a transfer pricing policy. If if you need assistance for this, we're very happy to to support. And um, a good way to see is that you need to determine your taxable income. Uh, test on how you, based on your results of 2022, 2023, how much your taxable income will be based on the allowable expenses and exemptions. And of course, uh, applying the law, and that should give you a good idea of what you should be uh, uh, expecting for your future taxable income, and your then that would help your cash flow management. Your tax filing procedures, of course, a lot of companies must be uh, conducting this with respect to VAT. Um, we want um, uh, 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 it, most companies would have done this for VAT, but you should be. Uh, preparing your filing procedures with respect to the corporate tax as well, which would be done uh, within the nine months of the end of the fin your uh, financial year. Okay. And then, yes, of course, seek professional advice. Uh, it'd be good to be working with a, a party that is, uh, can assist you in your uh, filing and compliance requirements. Your contracts and agreements should be updated with respect to ensure that it is taking into effect the current uh, the corporate tax law. And budget and cash flow plan uh, should be conducted. Training and education of your employees. Yeah. Okay. So we wanted to come to as we're coming to the closeout at the end of the hour. If you had any questions uh, with respect to the presentation we've got given right now, or anything uh, out, outside of that with respect to uh, tax or VAT, we can take that up right now. So uh, please do put it into your uh, into the uh, into the chat box, and we will take it up. Okay, try to. See, 
Okay, we have so far no questions. So everyone is well versed in uh, in the, the the tax subject. But uh, in any case, um, uh, we would request everyone who is attending, please, if you can give us some uh, feedback on what aspects of the corporate tax law, or uh, even uh, with respect to ESR or any of the other uh, legal business legal compliance uh, matters that have come up in. Uh, in the near term, you would like us to take up. We're happy to to uh, pr uh, create the program for that and the presentation, and we can do that. So if I could request those who are attending, please give our feedback uh, with respect to this presentation and what you would like to see, and then we can uh, organize that accordingly. Uh, we have one question that has come in uh, from Williard. Thank you for attending, Williard. Uh, is there a format for the sales invoice on how to show the withholding tax? Uh, that is the question. Yes or no? Uh, yes. So uh, currently, uh, we, we still do not have uh, the detailed structure of uh, how we're going to do that. Okay. But of course, uh, given the other, uh, uh, because uh, basically what will happen is that uh, the withholding tax in the UAE is actually zero. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, definitely there will be no reporting requirement when it comes to that one, okay? So for the meantime, uh, it is considered a zero, but who knows, let's see what will happen in the future if it will become an actual, uh, you know, a positive rate. Yeah, yeah. But for the meantime, since it is zero, uh, we don't see any reporting requirements as of the moment. Yeah. Okay, I think that we don't have any other questions. Oh, we have one more that's come in. Uh, yes, will a UAE permanent established entity have the liability to pay corporate tax on incomes earned by branch, which is resident in other GCC country? UAE entity has management control over the branch. And the quick answer to this is yes, uh, you will have to. Uh, Arnold, go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, because I take note that if you have a PE in the UAE, uh, for your tax obligation, you are taxable at uh, your worldwide income. Yeah, that's right. Um, so you have the liability to pay income earned by, uh, uh, if you're a resident in the GCC country, uh, are you supposed to pay in the UAE for that? Uh, that the, if that's the question, um, but most likely you have to see what are the tax laws in that GCC country. and whether UE has a double tax treaty with it. So, um, okay, so we have no other open questions. Yes. Uh, thanks so much for attending everyone. Uh, I know this subject is a bit, uh, you know, uh, off on one uh, small aspect of the tax law, but I think we have a lot of foreign companies that are doing business over here that should be aware of the non-resident uh, rules uh, and then just be aware of it to ensure that they're in compliance. Uh, from the outset, very easy to understand is that anybody doing business here in the UAE, uh, the corporate tax will apply to them. If you're getting a UAE sourced income, it will apply to you. So that is the rule of thumb to remember. And um, anyways, thank you so much for attending. Uh, thanks, Arnold. Uh, thanks for everyone else who is uh, here. We look forward to hosting you for the next uh, webinar. And please do as my uh, our request to uh, send your, your uh, information on what you would like us to cover. Thank you very much Thank and you. all the best.